which area in the Philippines would be appropriate for a significant influx of Israeli immigrants? Put differently, which region in the Philippines has the capacity to host a considerable influx of Israeli immigrants? Based on the historical presence of Jews in the Philippines, although a specific location hasn't been pinpointed, we can reasonably speculate. We can speculate on potential locations for the relocation of Israelis in the Philippines. Before delving into the potential locations for incoming Israeli immigrants, it's crucial to address a fundamental question. Why have Israelis chosen the Philippines as their new home? Why haven't Israelis chosen Malaysia or Indonesia, given their considerable land size compared to the Philippines? Malaysia and Indonesia have refrained from establishing diplomatic relations with Israel, actively preventing any formal or informal ties due to the predominantly Muslim population in both countries. In my earlier videos, I talked about the special bond between Jews and Filipinos. The friendly welcome that Filipinos gave to Jews shows how tolerant Philippine society is. But it's important to note that Filipinos accepted Jews long before 1935 by quite a lot. I normally don't ask viewers to subscribe, but I've noticed that some viewers might have the intention of subscribing and liking the video, but forget to do so. Take a moment and hit the subscribe and like button. It doesn't cost you anything. In the 16th century, the Spanish Inquisition forced many Jews in Spain to become Christians or leave. These converted Jews called Maranos or Conversos, along with converted Muslims, were known as Sephardi Jews. Some of them settled in the Philippines, particularly in the northern Samar. They secretly practiced Jewish rituals, fearing persecution from the Inquisition. Other new Christians from the Philippines faced similar trials. Despite their small numbers, the Jewish presence in the Philippines during the Spanish colonization was precarious due to laws against organized Jewish communities. The first group of Jews to settle in the Philippines during Spanish colonial times came from France in 1870. They were the Levy brothers, who were escaping the effects of the war in France. The opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 made trade between Europe and the Philippines easier, attracting more Jews to the country. Eventually, Jews from Turkey, Syria, and Egypt also joined the community. By the end of the Spanish period, there were about 50 Jews in the Philippines. It wasn't until the Spanish-American War in 1898, when the United States took over, that the Jewish community could openly practice their religion. When the Philippines became an American colony, American Jews saw it as an opportunity. Some Jewish soldiers decided to stay in the Philippines after their military service ended. Jewish teachers from the US also came with a group of volunteer teachers called Thomasites to teach Filipino children. Apart from teaching, young Jewish businessmen were attracted to the Philippines because of new business opportunities. They set up new shops or expanded their businesses from the US mainland. During the Philippine Commonwealth era, 1935 to 1946, Jewish refugees from Europe sought safety in Manila. Between 1935 and 1941, many Jews escaped Europe and came to the Philippines. The first German Jews who arrived in Manila came from the Jewish community in Shanghai, when Japan occupied Peking in 1937. With the help of Ho Feng Shan, the Chinese Consul General in Austria, Austrian Jews also found refuge in the Philippines. Manila welcomed 30 German Jews' families from Shanghai, starting a larger program that rescued 1,300 European Jewish refugees, the largest group of Jews to come to the Philippines in history. Before the attack on Pearl Harbor, over 1,300 Jews from Europe had moved to the Philippines. By the end of 1941, the Jewish community in Manila had grown to about 2,500 members eight times its size since 1937. But when the Japanese entered Manila in December 1941, they interned all enemy alien civilians 
including American Jews, in camps like the University of Santa Thomas internment camp, and later at the Los Banos internment camp and the old Bilibid prison in Manila. After the Philippines was liberated from the Japanese occupation by the US and the Philippine Commonwealth Armed Forces, the former internees of SDIC, along with remaining refugees in Manila, worked to rebuild their community. The American military helped the Jewish community by providing food, water, supplies, and medicine. The destruction caused many refugees and their American and British helpers to leave the Philippines, reducing the Jewish community by 30%. By 1948, only about 250 European Jewish refugees remained out of an estimated 600 Jews. As of 2011, Metro Manila has the largest Jewish community in the Philippines, comprising about 70 families. The country's only synagogue, Beth Yaakov, is in Makati, while there are some Jews in other parts of the country, such as the Bagel Boys of Subic and Angeles City. They are mostly temporary residents like diplomats or businessmen. Additionally, there are a few Israelis working at call centers and in executive positions in Manila. The Jewish rescue plan grew into a larger effort to relocate 10,000 refugee Jews to Mindanao. This raises the question, will the new wave of Israelis settle in Mindanao or other parts of the Philippines? To address this question, first let's look at each area considering its size, economic capabilities, and infrastructure. Let's begin with Luzon. Luzon is the biggest and most crowded island in the Philippines, situated in the northern part of the archipelago. It's the main hub for the country's economy and politics. Manila, the capital, and Quezon City, the most populous, are located here. As of 2022, Luzon had a population of 65 million, making up over half of the country's total population. It's also the world's fourth most populous island and the 15th largest by land area. Because of migrations that have taken place over many centuries, various ethnic groups like the Chinese, Spanish, Japanese, Indian, and Muslim Moros from Mindanao have settled in urban areas in the Philippines. Mixed race populations such as Chinese mestizos and Spanish mestizos, as well as more recent mixtures, including Americans, Japanese, Koreans, Indians, and Arabs, are also sometimes found. About one-third of Luzon's population has mixed heritage with influence from Southern Han Chinese and or Hispanic backgrounds, particularly in Manila. Americans primarily settled in central Luzon's urban areas like Angeles and Olangapo due to the presence of former U.S. military bases there, while Koreans and Japanese mainly settled in major cities and towns like Koreatown in Angeles City, Baguio, and Subic. With that being said, do you think Luzon is a perfect place for Israelis to settle? Considering Luzon's high population and economic activity, it might not be able to accommodate a large influx of Israelis. However, since most economic opportunities are in Luzon, resettling them there could help them find jobs and boost the Philippines economy. But this is what I think. Let me know what you think. The next option is Visayas. It's situated in the middle of the Philippines. It's made up of many islands, mostly around the Visayan Sea. The people who live here are mostly Visayans. The Visayas region is further subdivided into subgroups or three other regions. Western Visayas with a population of 8 million, Central Visayas with 8 million, and Eastern Visayas with 5 million people. In terms of both land size and population, the Visayas could be a suitable option for Israeli settlements. But when considering economic opportunities, Luzon is a better option due to its stronger economy. The third option is Mindanao. Mindanao is the Philippines' second largest island after Luzon and the seventh most populous island globally, situated in the southern part of the country. It belongs to a group of islands called the Mindanao Island Group, which includes nearby islands like the Sulu Archipelago. Mindanao has a population of 27 million people, 
Considering Mindanao's size, could it be the most suitable choice for Israeli settlements? And this leads me to the Mindanao Plan. The Mindanao Plan proposed resettling Jews on the southern island of Mindanao in the Philippines. This idea came after the Evian Conference led by American President Franklin Roosevelt, which aimed to address the Jewish refugee crisis. The plan included establishing agricultural settlements in less developed areas, including Mindanao. In 1939, President Quezon agreed to resettle 10,000 refugees on Mindanao over 10 years, with conditions such as obtaining naturalization papers and not becoming dependent on public assistance. This was the only significant resettlement plan for Jews in Asia. Given that most people in Mindanao are Muslims, would relocating Jews there lead to tensions in the area? Now let's examine the advantages and disadvantages of Israelis moving to the Philippines. Generally speaking, immigration brings big economic advantages, like a more flexible job market, more skilled workers, high demand and diverse innovation. But some people worry about issues like too many people, crowded places, and more strain on public services. They also argue that when less skilled workers come in, it can push wages down and make it harder for locals to find jobs. Some say immigrants often come with little money, so they are really motivated to succeed. They argue that those who are brave enough to leave their home country are usually the ones with big dreams and are ready to take risks, making them the most energetic workers. Look at the American or even Canadian economy, for instance. Many immigrants moved there and started famous American companies, which led to better living and more choices for everyone. Take Steve Jobs from Apple, whose father was from Syria. Alexander Bell, who invented the telephone, was from Scotland. Jeff Bezos from Amazon, whose dad was a Cuban immigrant. One of the biggest disadvantages is pressure on public services. When more people move in, it strains services like schools, hospitals, roads, and buses. This can make locals feel like the quality of services is going down because there aren't enough resources to keep up with the growing population. And this is specifically true if Israelis were to settle in the Visayas or Luzon region. Another major disadvantage is housing costs. If immigrants move to areas with limited housing stock, like in Luzon, migration can put upward pressure on rents and house prices, reducing living standards and increasing housing poverty for both immigrant and Filipinos who experience high living costs. Also, there could be conflicts between locals and immigrants, especially if they have different cultures. This is particularly true for Mindanao where many people are Muslims. But I don't think that would be a problem since thousands of Jews lived in Mindanao. But that's what I think. Let me know what you think. If you made it to the end of the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button before leaving. 